Well, that isn't denying man's responsibility, as so many say. All those who plead for a conditional covenant insist that this is the only way to preserve the responsibility of man. Well, I don't know if you have to teach heresy to, to preserve the responsibility of man. You're in a sorry fix, I'll tell you that. <coughs> But that's not the point. The point has nothing to do with man's responsibility. The New Covenant says, what you could not do, what Israel could not do, what Judah could not do, what you cannot do, I do for you. I do it all. I don't leave anything to you. Not when I establish my covenant, and not when I maintain my covenant. We must not say, as some do, I suppose, well, with the establishment of the covenant, it's God who establishes it. But if that covenant is to be maintained, we've got to do our part. We have certain conditions we have to meet. We have responsibilities and obligations that if they are not met will mean the end of the covenant with us. No, no. God says, I will establish my covenant and I will do that totally apart from you and anything you do and I will maintain my covenant. I'll see to it that my covenant is continued. That's Psalm 89, by the way. Let me just read that passage. We sang that a few moments ago. It's talking about Christ. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I'm reading at verse 27. Also I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. <coughs> and then listen, his seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne is the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law, and walk not in my judgments. If they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, as we always do, then will I visit their transgression with a rod and their iniquity with stripes. That's what God does. He visits our transgression with a rod and our iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, there's one of those powerful neverthelesses. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, and as the faithful witness in heaven. Oh, that passage is packed with comfort, I tell you that. Nevertheless, my covenant will I not alter. He establishes his covenant and he preserves it by the power of his grace through Christ. Why? Well, because, and that underscores the importance of the law, because Christ kept the law. He is the eternal Son of God. I came into our world born of a woman. Paul says in Galatians 4, under the law, mind you, he was the law giver. He put himself under the law. 
And the law says to Christ, as it says to you and to me, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. And Christ said, I come to do thy will, O God. I love thee with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, and with all my strength. I keep the law perfectly. But then came the cross. And on the cross, God abandoned him and poured out all the fury of his wrath so that he was caught in a whirlwind of fury that drove him away from God into the depths of hell. And when in the depths of hell, he bore the burden of the wrath of God and knew the agony and horror of being abandoned by God so that he was no longer consciously God's son, nor was God consciously his father, so that the agony and suffering of Christ wrung out of his soul the anxious question, Why? Why? Why hast thou forsaken me? It's so dark down here. The suffering is so great. I can't even understand why I'm suffering. Then Christ said, but I will keep thy law. I will. Thou art my God. And though I am abandoned by thee, and I know not why I am here, and thou art so far away, I love thee, O oh my God, with all my heart, and with all my mind, and with all my soul, and with all my strength. I will love thee to the end. I love thee even if I do not understand. I love thee whether I, even though I am forever forsaken. I love thee, O oh my God, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But I love thee with all my heart and mind and soul and strength. He kept the law in the depths of hell. And by keeping the law and bearing the burden of God's wrath against sin, sins of all his people, he paid that awful debt that you and I cannot pay. Our inability to keep the law was fulfilled by Christ. He did what we cannot do. And he did it in such a powerful and significant way that it's finished all that's necessary for time and for eternity for the covenant to be established with God's people is accomplished in Christ. That's a marvelous truth. Why in the world anyone wants to introduce conditions into the covenant is a mystery to me. If there are conditions, I'm lost. If I have to do something, it's forever hopeless. If God requires of me one thing, I go to hell. Christ did it all. Christ's sacrifice is perfect complete because he kept the law in the agony of hell.